my name is Anthony Willer and I'm an applications engineer with Go Engineer. In this quick tip video, I'm going to talk about SOLIDWORKS Plastics and the symmetric runner functionality that came out in SOLIDWORKS Plastics 2015. So just to illustrate, we have the ability of analyzing a full family mold uh, system if you choose to. So in the upper image here, this would be a two component family mold. And what's also shown here is a 2D sketch representing the runner layout. With the symmetric runner functionality, I could reduce the computation by just analyzing one of the bodies and including just the symmetric portion of the full runner layout. So in this case here, uh, looking at the simple sketch, I have the vertical line representing the sprue, horizontal li line representing the runner, and the angle line here representing the gate geometry. So I'm just going to toggle over to the SOLIDWORKS. I just want to take a look at that functionality. So here within SOLIDWORKS, I have a model that's already been pre-configured. Again, SOLIDWORKS Plastic has already been enabled. When you enable SOLIDWORKS Plastics, you'll see a SOLIDWORKS Plastics Command Manager tab, as well as an Analysis tab within the Feature Manager design tree. So the first thing, the symmetric runner functionality that came out in SOLIDWORKS Plastics 2015 requires a solid mesh. So I'm going to go through and define the solid mesh. So when I bring up the solid mesh definition, what I need to do here is specify runner and cooling system design. When I step through the next step here, since I've meshed this previously, it's going to ask me if I want to use my previous mesh parameters. For simplicity, I'm going to select yes. But I do want to illustrate how the channel design tool works. So what I'm going to do here is delete out one of the uh, elements. And just to talk about how the tool works, first off, you need to specify the type. So instead of cooling channel here, I'll specify runner. And what I need to do next here is define the profile shape. The only uh, profile shape that we have for runners is circle. So that's the only option from this pull-down list. The next thing here, I have to define the diameters of the endpoints for my runner, or I can specify one diameter value and make use of a draft angle. So if I select the draft angle option here, I just have the key in the diameter value, plus the draft angle be an inward or outward draft depending on my selection here on the left. In this case here, I'll specify two diameters. I'm going to key in a value of five millimeters for one point and three millimeters for the other point. To increase the mesh resolution, I can up the number of elements. And this is going to help out with result accuracy. At this point, what I need to do is select the line representing the element. And once you do that, you'll see a preview showing in this case, uh, the sprue element part of the runner system. The system happened to define the diameters appropriately, so the smaller diameter up top, larger diameter at the bottom, but let's say it wasn't defined correctly. So I could select the entity within the selection list and click flip dimension. And you can see how it flips uh, the dimensions from top to bottom. I'll go ahead and flip it back uh, to the appropriate uh, orientation. Once you're done with that step, it's a matter of stepping through the wizard here. Uh, but what's gonna, what we're looking at right now is what they refer to as the domain listing. Currently, I have two domains. I have the cavity domain as well as the runner domain. In this case, both are appropriate, and I'll have to make any changes. Stepping through to the next screen here, what's going to ask me to do is specify some settings I want to use for the surface mesh. So again, to be able to create a solid mesh in SOLIDWORKS Plastics, I first have to create a watertight surface mesh. And then once that's the case, I can go in and fill in the volume with solid elements. So in this case here, just for simplicity, I'm just going to go with a value of 2 millimeters for the triangle size, and I'm going to use no local refinement. So once I select mesh here, again, my goal to create a solid mesh is to have a watertight surface mesh, so I could verify that on the summary screen. So when I hit next, it'll list out the summaries for the surface mesh, and right at the top, it's telling me that the model is, in fact, waterproof. So I can go on to the next step. If I need to manipulate the surface elements, I could do so using a number of options down below. In this case, I'm just going to use the mesh as is. The important step on this screen here is to define the appropriate solid mesh type. So there are two options here, tetrahedral and hexahedral. The symmetric runner functionality requires a tetrahedral solid mesh, so I'll leave it as the default choice, hit next, and then the option to enable the symmetric mesh is right at the top. 
So again, this will only come into play if you use the runner and cooling design option and def and built up the uh, the runner system. So at this point, since I went through that, now I can check on the option here for symmetrical runner. Once I hit edit, it's going to give me multiple choices here. So I can do half symmetry, which matches my original problem statement, or I can do quarter symmetry, or I can specify circular symmetry. The nice thing with circular symmetry, it gives me the ability of increasing the number of instances to, and then you'll see the preview update based off that type of symmetrical runner system. So in this case here, I'll specify half symmetry and select OK. At this point, all I have to do is create the mesh. Once the mesh is created, SOLIDWORKS Plastics will show you a section view of the mesh. And at this point, I can zoom in. I can take a look at the mesh through the cavity itself and also look at the mesh within the runner itself, runner system itself. So this gives you the ability of just verifying if the mesh looks appropriate before accepting the mesh. So in this case here, I'll step through and generate the solid mesh. Once, once the mesh is written to the hard disk, at this point, what you can do is you can mesh the model or visualize the mesh. So click on the mesh model option here. And what I want to you know, uh, point out here is that if I take a look at the sprue, a part of the runner system, you can clearly see the symmetry that the system enforced. So the next step here would be a matter of just stepping through the rest of the setup. Now, I usually work top to bottom, so that's going to start with the polymer, uh, the polymer material. So I can either open up the database, take a look at you know various families, pick the appropriate material, and so forth. You know, once as an example here, you know, looking at just uh, generic material for ABS, if I go to the polymer material properties tab, I can see, take a look at what's the recommended melt recommended mold temp and so forth. So once you define the material, the next step is to define the fill settings. So if I open up the fill settings here, if you like, you can go with the automatic defined fill time by the system or you can override that. So as an example here, maybe I want to key in 1.75 seconds. And then from the material database, from the material in play, the system is going to automatically bring in the melt and mold temperatures. The user, however, has the ability of making changes to these values if needed. And as well, you can increase the maximum ejection pressure limit for, this, for the solution. In this case, I'll leave the default 100 megapascals. So after the fill settings, what you can do next here is to find the injection location. So in this case here, I'm not applying the injection location to the cavity itself. I'm applying it to the top side of the sprue. So what I need to do here, just select somewhere about the top side. Uh, what you'll see here is a pointer diameter, and you can increase or decrease that pointer diameter. But the goal here is to have the pointer diameter large enough so that all of the appropriate element faces on the top side of the sprue is automatically selected. Uh, so if I use too small of a pointer, pointer diameter and I go to add location, it's not going to capture all those surfaces. What I could do here, I can manually pick those if I choose to by changing the option up top. So I could say injection location face. And then the elements will be shown, and I can start selecting these faces manually. Instead, I'll go ahead and use a larger pointer diameter. So it automatically captures all the faces for me. And simply to add location, and you can see how it automatically picked up the appropriate uh, surface elements. So at this point, to run the calculation, all I have to do is right-click on Flow, under Run, and select the Run option here. But before I do so, what I want to talk about next here, in the boundary conditions, the system automatically creates a symmetric face boundary condition for you. So if I open that up and I rotate the model, what you'll see here is that all of the symmetric elements on the sprue are automatically selected. They're highlighted here in red. So this is how the system enforces symmetry during the calculation. If, I, if it made sense, what I could do here is add additional selections to this if I choose to. I can window select, I could start selecting manually and so forth. In this case, I want to keep those additional selections, so I'll just hit cancel. But I just want to illustrate the functionality. I already have the model run beforehand, so I'll toggle over to a completed study. 
once the study loads up, what I need to do next here is just load the flow results in this case. And what I need to do at, uh, oh, at this point, I can go ahead and look at a various number of plots. So as an example, I can animate the fill time plot. And what I usually do when I'm working with a solid mesh is make use of an additional clipping option called ISO surface mode. And this shows the fill in terms of the volume. So you can see the actual fill through the volume of the model. And in my opinion, it gives you more visual feedback, more clarity on what's happening uh, uh, within the system. Other things that could be of interest, one could be pressure and the fill. So when I select the pressure and the fill option here, I can see that the max injection pressure is just about 97 megapascals. My injection pressure limit was 100 megapascals, so I'm pushing the limits of the system based on you know, the melt material, based on the uh, sizing of the gates and so forth, or sizing of the runner system and so forth. Other things can be of interest to take a look at. Maybe I want to take a look at sink marks. Maybe I want to take a look at air traps. So essentially the post-processing is going to be the same. The only difference here is the input uh, for the symmetric runner system. I just want to thank you for taking a look at this quick tip video, and I hope you found something beneficial from it. Again, my name is Anthony Willer, and I'm an applications engineer with Go Engineer. You can access our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Go Engineer, or if you like, you can access our website and access the video library from there. That's just goengineer.com slash go video channel. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.